Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's test the mic. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we could all stand to our feet as we start, as we get ready for the service. Praise the Lord Jesus. We'd like to open up with a word of prayer. This being the final night of 2020. Praise the Lord Jesus. So let's all stand and give reverence to God right now. Lord, we pray and we worship you right now, Jesus. We thank you for bringing us here safely tonight, Lord. And if there's anybody on their way, we pray that you bring them safely, Lord Jesus. The ones that could not have been here tonight with us, Lord, we pray that you touch them, touch their lives, Lord Jesus. We pray that you touch those in the stream right now, Lord. Just have your way tonight. Have your way in this service, Lord. We pray and ask, Lord Jesus, that you be in the midst of everything that we do tonight. Be in the midst of the worship. Help us, Lord, to just give ourselves away tonight, Lord Jesus, to worship and to praise you, to glorify and exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. We pray for those on the bed of affliction right now. Touch them right now, Jesus. Touch them. Turn things around for them right now. Touch their families. Grant comfort to them, Lord. Grant your peace into their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray and ask that you touch each and every family here tonight, each and every member. Touch us right now, Lord Jesus. Help us to continue to do your work, your will, Lord Jesus. Lord, take charge in the service tonight. Help us, Lord, to forget our problems, our worries. Forget everything that is not of you right now. And just give over to worship right now, Jesus. Lord, we came here tonight to celebrate a whole year that has passed on them, Lord. And we will celebrate because we celebrate in your name. We celebrate you being in our lives, Lord Jesus, us being a part of your family and your body right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We pray that you touch our nation. Touch our nation, touch our leaders right now, Jesus. Help them to do the best that they could do. Help them to take care of our people, Lord Jesus. Help us to remember they are supposed to be a reflection of you being a leader, being in a position of authority, that they should do all they could do to reflect your goodness, your grace, because it's all because of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to worship and praise you. Hallelujah. You know, tonight is a night that a lot of people reflect on the year. And we look back over all the problems that we have come through. It's a night that we look back at, on where our faith has taken us. A night of reflection of how are we going into the next year and how we spend this year. A lot of people key, come to church on all oh, these nights to dedicate or rededicate themselves back to Christ. Lord, we are yours. Just take charge over us right now, Lord Jesus. Into your hands I commit again with all I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your Again, and to your hand I commit again.
Lord Jesus. We worship and we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. The goodness of God. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. For your mercy never fails me. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. In all my days, heaven held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. It's all my life. Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing all the goodness of God I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God it's all my life it's all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able with every breath that I am able oh I will say Cause all my life you have been faithful. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing I'm for the good. Your goodness, Lord. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out. Running out to me. Your goodness. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise and we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship and praise Hallelujah. the Lord right now. Hallelujah. 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 Glory we're going to flip it around Jesus. a little bit. Jesus. And Glory we're going to give God Hallelujah. some Hallelujah. real praise Glory right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's Hallelujah. our Father and our Father, Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah.
We ask right now, Lord Jesus, for a double portion right now, Jesus. We ask for a double portion of worship right now, Lord. A double portion of finances right now. A double portion of health. A double portion of joy, peace, love. We ask for increase right now, Lord Jesus. Increase us in your love and in your faith. Lord, the money could come after, but increase us in faith and love first. So that we can enjoy all the money and all the blessings he'll bless us with later on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the morning when I wake up, let us give praise. We know it's night time right now. But let's pretend we now get up and it's the first thing we want to do this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the morning when I wake up, I will give my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout and dance to you, because you have been my help forever, ever. Hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Hey, hey, my God is good, oh. Hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Everything I double, double. Everything I double, double. Everything is double, 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 In the morning when I wake up, I will give my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout and dance to you, because you have been my head forever, ever. When you're standing on a solid rock and you know the trouble that you've got, Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you're bound to fail. 
Start a little bit lower for this next song. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah turn my life around. And he makes a way. Warrior, a Christian warrior, praise 
shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? Then you need to lift your hands and shout. Hey! Hallelujah. I, I, I was going to ask you to hug somebody next to you, but we can't do that. So you're going to send an air hug. An air hug to them. Just greet them without touching on your left, on your right, to the front, and the back. And just tell them, long time I ain't see you. Tell, tell somebody else, long time I ain't see you. Hallelujah. Uh, I greet the church in a wonderful and precious name. That name is Jesus tonight, right? I, I greet those who are looking online and with us. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. This we have come. Yes, you can take your seats. We have come to the last day of the year. Amen. 2020. It's a year a lot of us would like to forget. Amen. A lot of us. But we learn some things along the way. So we have come to the end of the year. It's a New Year's Eve service. Some people call it All Year's Night. But whatever you call it, it's the ending of the year. This is a year, this is a time when people come and they somehow make resolutions. Amen. And I've heard this one so much that people have promised themselves that next year coming, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to start exercising. I'm not going to eat meat. I'm not going to do this. And then they come the other year and make the same resolution. But thank me to God that we are here tonight. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming out. The church is filled, and I'm about to bring the word of God. I want to thank God for the worship. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Maria had the flu for the entire week gone, and looked, and she, her voice was cracking. But nonetheless, we sang and enjoy ourselves. As you recall, in the last service, Sunday gone, uh, we hop on that maxi or bus, any one you take. And we started off in the book of Joshua. And we went to the river Jordan. And we learned last week that we had, when you face obstacles, we stop at Gilgal. And we deal, dealt with op obstacles opposition and obedience. God was teaching and training the children of Israel all these things to take them to the next place. So as we continue to enter into the promised land, tonight I just want to read from Joshua chapter 6. A few verses. I just ask you to follow on in Jesus' name. We do show reverence by Standing to the word of God, for those of you who are physically able, stand so we can read it. Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I had given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof. And the mighty men of valor. And you shall compa compass the city, all you men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shall do it six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. And seven day, and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets and shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight 
before him. Father, I pray that you bless the reading of your word. Those of God who are going to hear tonight. Father, bless your man's servant as I deliver to your people. In Jesus' name, let's all shout amen as you take your seats. Hallelujah. You know, I normally say, we are pressed for time, but for me not to preach long, I cannot work with your amen and praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Right, you get it. So the more you give me your amen and praise the Lord, the quicker I finish preaching. And then you can go home to all your barbecue and all the things that you are prepared to bring in your, the new year. Just quickly, we stop at Gilgal. And the Lord opened a way through the Jordan that they can come to that place. The next place they come, the children of Israel, they come at Jericho. What stood before the children of Israel way back then was the sea and God made a way. Then they, after 40 years, they came at the Jordan and God made a way. And now they are before Jericho. And there's Pentecostalism in all of us that you can't preach about Jericho without preaching about praising God. Because we know when we have come here, what we have come here to do is to worship God. It's to praise God. You have come through the gates with thanksgiving and you have entered into his courts with praise. As I said before, you can worship in your mind, but when you give praise, you open your mouth. When you give praise, you shout hallelujah. When you give praise, you say, God, be praised. Hallelujah. And, and it seems like when you have a Jericho moment, you learn how to praise God. You learn how to praise God. I wish if I had a witness here. When you're facing the most difficult day of your life, when you're facing walls that seem insurmountable, you learn how to praise God. Because somehow we believe that when we praise God, walls keep tumbling down. Somehow we believe, hallelujah, through his word, that when we lift our hands and we declare something in the atmosphere, that walls start falling down. I wonder if there's any wall movers, wall tumblers in the house of God. But as I speak about this, I just want to boost your bubble again today and tell you it's not only about praising here. Because if the shout brought down the wall, God told them to go around the city six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to circle it six more times. And the seventh time you're going to give a shout. And I started looking at it. I said, well, if God wanted that praise, that shout, he might have told them to do it on the first day, the second day, or the third day. But why tell them to go around it nearly 12, 13 times? Amen? So let's get into it. You see, what God was teaching the children of Israel is not to be like their four parents gone. Their mothers and fathers that complain, whine, and pout about everything that God did to them or for them. So they spent 40 years in the wilderness and until all of them died out, but a few. So the first point I want to make, there's a ministry of presence. Ministry of your presence. In other words, what I mean is by showing up. Don't run, show up, stand up, make your presence be felt. Because God said to them, I want you to go around the walls and keep doing that for six days. And then you know the rest. But I want to get to the point that when we show up, it tells others and it tells our Lord that we mean whatever we say and we stand on his word hallelujah let me get to this 
what God was teaching them. For you, for walls to start falling down, you need to be where the walls are. Amen. You need to be where the walls are. You need to be where that person, even in your job, who is giving you trouble, you need to show up on that job and face that person every day. Not take sick leave or vacation. Not take the long way around the office just to avoid them. What it means by that is that there's a, the ministry of presence is that you show up and you stand up and you let people know who you believe in and who is able. Can I get an amen, please? Now, when you show up, it tells others and it tells people that you mean business. Because you will show up in your job, you will open your windows to that neighbor who is giving you trouble, and you will face them every morning and say, good morning, the Lord bless you. Or something that is happening, you will show up by the doctor, even though the test might be not come as a way you like it or pleasing. You will show up at the lawyer, even self. You're going through problems and misery. You will show up at the church. You will show up wherever you need to be because God is blessing you in the ministry of your presence. That means I've come in to face another day and to fight. Avoidance. Avoidance. And when you avoid things, it really means you don't want to face it. You don't want to fight. It means you're a coward. So let me just get to back to the, the lesson. They were marching around. Now, while they were marching, the enemy was looking at them. The enemy was seeing them all the time. Because they were going around the walls and saying nothing. And some people believe that because you're a Christian, you need to take, when you get a slap on the right, to turn the left and take the next hand. Amen? Some people believe that because you're a Christian, you need to take whatever they give to you, whatever they tell you, and you're supposed to accept that. But I have news for you tonight. When you stand on the word of God and you show up, you're not only showing up yourself, you're showing up your God. Because the children of Israel, they were there marching around. But the enemy saw something that was in front of them. It, it was the ark of the covenant signifying the presence of God. And what it was telling them, you might be looking at us, and you might be greater than us, but I have a God who is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even imagine. I have a God who makes ways. I have a God who heals. I have a God who delivers. I have a God when he opens doors, nobody shut. I have a God when he opens opportunities, nobody can come against you. Have you ever been in a position that you didn't deserve it or you were not qualified for the position, but God made a way? Have you ever gone to the doctor and the test didn't come as you wanted, but lower down the line, you keep going and you kept going and God made a way? My God, we need to show up. We need to stand up. We need to fight. We need to fight tonight. He had a reason for them going around the wall. Next point, I want to make, there's a ministry of silence. Let's clap our hands for that. A ministry of silence. He said, I want you to be there at the wall. And I want you to keep silent. Now, they were marching. And I believe that while they were marching, God told them to be silent. God didn't tell the enemy to keep quiet. Think about that. God said to them, zip him out, say nothing. But the enemy, he said nothing to them. 
And I, and I think about it by day one, day two, day three. If, you, if I know people how you know people, I am sure that the enemy would have thrown some talk. Hallelujah. Would have said something along the way. And they might have said, others have tried to conquer this city and they have failed. What are you trying to do? Others have tried to do this and to do that. What you're trying to do. Others, and especially when we come to Christ and we make a decision to serve him. You know what happened? They will tell you, you're going to church and it will go last. Let me see how long it will last there. Let me see how long because you were this, you were that, you were living in sin. And because the friends I often hear that you had out there, the minute you choose to serve God, it, they all leave you and gone. But God is so good that he will bring people into your life that when you think that you lose some, you gain more. To encourage you, to pray for you, to uplift you, to tell you you can make it too. Because I have been there, I have done that, and God brought me out, out of it, out of the situation, out of the sickness, out of the problem. God made a way. I don't know about you, but is there anybody here that God made a way for you? Is there anyone sitting here tonight can look back over the years or over this year, 2020, and realize that it's God that kept you from coronavirus. It's God that kept you in your right mind. It's God that kept you when you lose your job or you lose the house. It's God that kept you when you got sick. It is God that kept you for another day. It is God that kept you that you can come here tonight on the last day of the year and shout hallelujah. It is God that kept you. You know why we, we, we were going through this? I thought about any one of us. Well, we had a, a brother, Deacon, who got it. And he said, it's the hardest thing. And he don't wish his worst enemy to go into the hospital. Because 14 days locked down. And all he saw was walls. Am I correct? Walls. And, and he didn't want anybody to go there. But when you think about his age... And what he have been through with the surgery and all. My God, others have died and gone. But God made a way. But God deliver him that he can be here with us, with, with, with us tonight. To lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So sometimes, what we need to learn, as I said in a previous preaching, is to zip our mouth. The reason... People will always talk. Amen. You can't stop people from talking. And as I grow older, I realize that sometimes you just don't need to answer. Because they go say this and they go say that. And they go say you can't make it. There's nothing good could come out of that family. There's nothing good. You can't make it. You can't make money. You can't do this. You can't do that. Because they tried it and they failed. But when you are doing it, you have God on the inside, working on the outside. And when God is in the inside, working on the outside, with God, you have the majority. You may not have anybody to back you up, but once you have God on your side, God is going to make a way. God will make a way. So, they walked around and they kept silent. You know, sometimes we try to explain ourselves to people. And have you ever been in a situation where you try, somebody accuse you or say something, and the more you try to explain yourself, is the more they say, like you're guilty? Like you're guilty or what? Yeah, why well, you're guilty? Why, why are you trying to defend yourself so? And sometimes we have to keep our mouth shut and not post everything on the internet. Hallelujah. You, sometimes you, you don't need to put it on the internet, write it down, or keep it to yourself. Because I look on, the, on Facebook and others, and everybody business on the internet. And then you want to know why this one hating you, and why that one don't like you. And people are so caught up that they will take a thousand pictures 
And out of the thousand, they will take that one that looks the best and post it up. People are so good that they, they put themselves exercising and sweating and they're running and they're really exercising. And when you, when you really check it out, they're on a couch with a bag of chips and they're taking out pictures. I heard two people conversing and one said, I can't talk to you again because you're not my friend. And the other said, why? said, because I post something and you didn't even put a like to it. So what kind of friend is that? This is the world that we live in. And sometimes you will know when Christian people are mature. You will know when they are mature, when they keep their mouth closed and let God fight the battle. Let God handle the battle. You don't need to answer everybody. Probably you don't need to answer nobody. Because deep in your heart, you know it is God that brought you out. Deep in your heart, you know it is God that saved you. Deep in your heart, you know without God, you will be at sentence hospital. Or you will be dead. But God made a way. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. So there's a the ministry of presence. Show up. The ministry of silence, keeping our mouth closed. And when we respond to ignorance, we validate what people are saying. When we respond to ignorance, we validate what people are saying. Now God will place certain people in your life to tell you the truth. Amen. The truth sometimes is hurt, but it's the truth. God will allow certain people in their life to let you know, hey, that road you're going down, that's a bad road. And if you and I good, you need to change up. You need to fix this. You need to do that. But then there are people who are hypocrites. As I heard some time ago, there are two classes of people in church, hypocrites and low hypocrites. And they will tell you, yes, that look good. Yes, that, that just looking, it looking like Joseph Court coat of many colors girl you make that dress look good and then go to the other one and say you ain't see what she went you ain't see how that looking that thing looking ugly my god but when you find people who will tell you with honesty because they care about you you told them people close to your heart because god is allowing them but most of the time we need to zip our mouth and let god handle it let the church get quiet there boy you don't need to answer any and everybody. I'm on another point. As we bring in this service here tonight with my ministering, he has given us a ministry of perseverance. They went around the wall six days, once per day. And then on the seventh day, they went six times. And on the seventh time, they shouted. Now think about this. They got up. Sister Sue, little Sue here, so I can see that. Sue Ann or Sue had to put on all the makeup. Get dressed, get the kids dressed, iron the clothes, cook the food. The soldiers had to shine their armor, get everything ready. The priests had to get the Ark of the Covenant. And then all get together, and on Monday, they march around the wall. Tuesday, Sister Sue had to get up again, put on all the makeup, dress the kids, iron the clothes, get the breakfast, get the whatever food. The soldiers had to polish their armor, sharpen their sword, and the priests had to take the Ark of the Covenant, and they would march around again. On Wednesday, if you're still not with me, I'll let you know. Sister Sue had to get up all over again, put on the makeup, put, cook the food, iron the clothes, get the children ready. And the soldiers had to sharpen their sword, shine their armor, and the priests had to get the Ark of the Covenant and go around the wall. The, the, what, what day I reach? Thursday. Probably in a list. So I go to Friday now. They had to do it over and over. Now, if you know people like I know people, I am quite sure that somebody by the third day would have just be walking 
and looking at the enemy, looking at the walls, hearing the enemy talk, and then realize we are at a disadvantage because we are down here and they are up there. Are you with me still? So I am sure if it was Trinidadians marching around by the third day, somebody would have walked and say, Pastor Joshua, what are you really doing? What's going on? Nothing is happening. I fed up work. I tired. The wife fed up cook. And every day we, we, we just fed up. Pastor, what is going on? But God caused them to go around and around and around. And on the sixth day, he had them to go around six times while they said nothing. But here comes a shout. My God, on the seventh day, when they went after the six times, on the seventh time, God said, okay, now you can open your mouth. Because what I was teaching you is to show up and fight. My God, what I was teaching you is how to keep silent and just listen. What I am teaching you is how to persevere, keep going and keep going and keep going. Because a lot of Christians believe that after they pray and they say amen, God will make a way. And then after the amen, nothing happens and you get frustrated. Are you still with me? Because you're expecting instantaneously after you pray to God that God will make a way. But I want to advise you as a pastor, give you some pastoral advice that if I think I know God as, as who God is, that most times he may not or he might not make a way right away. I heard the old people say, he may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. But the other part of that, he may not come when you want him, but when he comes, you're going to want him. Come on. So what I want to advise you is if you pray about something, because we are going around the walls, we are praying, we are saying, God, I expect him financial breakthrough excuse me i am expecting the job or i'm expecting to be married at this age i'm expecting to have children i'm expecting this and you go down on your knees and you pray and you didn't get the answer right away what i want to is encourage you go back down on your knees and pray again get up and with expectation, look forward. And if God does not make a way, go down back on your knees again and pray again. And you keep doing that with expectation. Because with perseverance, with stignuity, with sticking to whatever you're doing, it is eventually that God will make a way. We don't know how, we don't know when. We don't know what he's going to do. But we believe his word. And he says those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Wait on the Lord. He was teaching Israel perseverance. To keep doing what you're doing. To keep fighting. Because if we give up. The others who are coming behind, what you expect them to do. If we give up as parents and don't stand 
on the word of God to declare to our children what will they do to their children. If we don't stand up for righteousness and holiness, what will happen to the generation to come? Let me just say this. While they were going around, they kept looking and they kept expecting. Why? Because God said he will do it. And you might be praying about something and I encourage you tonight that when you come to church, clap, rejoice and give God all because the expectation is that he will do it. You come next Sunday because the previous Sunday he did not do it. But you come the other Sunday and you praise and you worship, you lift hands and you rejoice and you expect that he will make a way. And if he does not do it that Sunday, you come the other Sunday, you praise, you rejoice, you lift up hands and you go again. Because you don't know when. You don't know how, but you believe in God. You know, it's like applying for a job. When you go, you apply for the job. And you don't know when they go call. You don't know if they go get through. But somehow, you apply and you say, God, I'm putting this in your hand. And months passing, Sometimes you forget about praying about it. And then one day you receive a call. Are you so and so? Hello? Did you apply for this job? Yes. Well, you have an interview. You know how long we're trying to get onto you? And so and so. And then you're so happy. God is going to pick up that line and say, Sister so and so, I heard your prayer. And now I'm going to do what I said I will do. Because I was teaching you how to persevere. I was teaching you how to keep praying. I was teaching you how to keep fighting. I was teaching you how to keep walking. Oh boy. My boy's gone now. But I'll share this one for free. A lot of Christians come on a Sunday. Spend an hour and a half or two and shout and on Monday they weak and they go back to living anyhow it don't work so come on a Sunday you shout you make all that shouting was making noise because the God that you serve this Sunday is the God Monday in your job Tuesday while you're on the streets so let me just tell you this when you come with perseverance the God that you lift your hands and worship Sunday is the same God Monday you will give him praise and glory is the same God Tuesday you will dance and praise God is the same God Wednesday you will give him praise and glory is the same God Thursday and Friday and when you live like that and you have him on your mind you have him in your spirit my God and you're in tune with him when you enter through the gates of the church and the minute you enter into the house it don't take all that winding up and warming up because you have been in tune right through the week so from the time somebody says let's praise God you are the first one to jump up and give God praise I wish if I had a witness in this house tonight to know that the same God yesterday and today and he will be the God forevermore show up persevere somebody asks pastor how you want to leave this world and I, I said well I want to do the best 
I can for God. And I explain all I want to do. I said, so how do you want to live, leave this world? They said, I want to live, I want to leave empty. And for some seconds of pause, contemplating what they just said. And I said, what do you mean by that? They said, I want to leave empty, knowing that I give my all, knowing that I give me everything, and I have no regrets. I have no regrets. And I had an old pastor used to tell me, the only regret he might have in heaven is that he didn't do enough. And I held that thought and I lived by it for a while. But then I met an apostle, travel all over the world. And as a young man, I was talking to him. And he said, I told him what the old pastor said. He said, well, that's his concept. He said, but I, when I close my eye here, I want to be like the apostle Paul who said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the course. Ah, I did everything. I gave my all. And I know there's a crown for me laid up in heaven. I don't know about you. But I want to give my all. That's why when I come to worship, I worship like my last. So if you don't praise God, bet your last dollar, I going to praise God. If you don't clap, I will clap. If you don't dance, I will dance. Because God has been too good. He has been too good. And I know always to say it. He keeps getting gooder and gooder and gooder. He keeps getting better, better, and better. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to share with you that while others are fainting, while others are falling, people said that now they have a new strain of the virus and it's more deadly. We don't know what 2021 will hold and some of us think it might get worse. I am not the one to preach fire in the sky. I preach reality. Whether it get worse or not, because all of us looking for a cure, all of us looking for something to happen that will change the state that we are in right now. But I don't know. It's all in God's hand. But whatever happens, I still going to worship my God. I still going to praise my God. I still going to come to church once it is allowed. I had a conversation with my wife. And I say, somehow my smallest son has pronounced that I would go before. And he says, mommy, when I am 25, I go have my house, I go have my bad cars, I go have my wife, and I bought five children, and I go take care of you. That's what he said. So she said, where will be, where will be your daddy? He said, you're going to be dead and gone. I go take care of you. He said, Lord have mercy. The man killed me before everybody. But I said to her, I say, if I happen to go before you and I let my children, I let them know, I want to be buried with a jeans and jersey. I say, well, you, I, well, no, no, no. I say, yeah, that is my request. I say, because I want to let the world know I came humble and I'm going humble. I want to let the world know that my life depended on God and God alone. 
Yes, there were people around. Yes, but without God in it, I would be nothing. I would be dead. So I'm going back humble. I want to send a message. And I, she said, well, no, nah, that can't happen. You go, yeah, I guess I said, no, no suit. Nothing like that. Jersey and jeans. So if she don't want to do it, and you all still alive, make sure it happen. All of my, outlive some of you all. Tonight, show up. Tonight, learn to be silent. Tonight, persevere. Keep doing it every day. Perseverance means what you keep doing it, you keep doing it non-stop. Hallelujah. I, I, I've seen while people said that this virus came, this pandemic, they lose their jobs, lose their homes, they lose their lives. People lose all kind of things. And I sympathize with that. But what it has done for me as a believer is to keep close contact with God. Because when it came into Trinidad and we received the first debt and we went into lockdown, believers, Christians, and non-Christians started praying. Those of us who had problem opening this, we open it and we start reading and we start looking for scriptures to declare that God is our healer. We held our family when they were going out and we said, let me cover you with the blood of Jesus. I wish I had a witness here. So while it was bad, it also bring out some good in us that we kept close contact with our God. Let me tell you something. As we face 2021, we are stepping in into a new year on chartered waters as they may say. We don't know what will happen, where God will lead us. But I want to encourage you keep praying keep trusting keep believing because if he did it then through the Red Sea if he did it for them in the Jordan River if they shouted and a 12 to 15 feet high wall came down if he did it then he can do it again and he's a God who keeps doing it over and over and over and that's our belief today that he will make a way so thank you for listening my voice is gone I can't go anymore but God bless you tonight face 2021 we know we normally have some nice cliches and all this hear what my cliche for 2021, God, you first. God, you first. And if you put him first in your life, every day, he will make a way. That thing you've been praying for, he will open up doors. Your healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Keep believing. Keep trusting God. To those who are listening on air, thank God. This Sunday... We would not have any service, so we would not be live. But, and all the members were rejoicing because we have no. <laughs> but God bless you tonight as we have come to our end in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's clap our hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. As we have come to our end of the live feed, which we did first was.